Hey guys, this is Brian Evil, and today we're playing Through the Ages, a new story of civilization. Um, this is my first time I'm playing an online game uh, using this version of the game, so I wasn't sure how long it would take for people to join my game. Uh, so let's uh, l not delay them too much. Um, play our moves and then maybe talk about what the game is. Um, this is a digital implementation of a board game. This is one of my favorite board games, although I, <clears throat> I haven't played very much of it recently. Um, it's available or it used to be available for free online and sometime in the last year um, an official implementation of it has been uh, introduced um, both for smartphone, tablet, uh, works pretty well as a touchscreen. I tested it out on my phone, uh, and now I am testing it out on the computer. Um, and so far, I'm really enjoying it. I'll try to explain more about the game in general uh, during what I assume will be lulls while we wait for the other players to go. Uh, it is turn-based. It's a board game. Um, I'll I'll see. Yeah, no, there'll definitely be time to think while the other players are going. Um, so uh, it's clearly a civilization themed game uh, and it's a board game and it's really amazing how uh, they can implement a lot of, how the game designer was able to implement a lot of um, like very computer game mechanics, uh, but have it all captured in a board game. And now it's converted back to a computer game. So, um, uh, well, anyways, uh, this, uh, uh, I hope I'll be more coherent uh, as the game progresses. Uh, I was actually in the middle of dinner and wasn't expecting people to join the game that quickly, uh, but here are a bunch of people, so that is great. Um, do I want Colossus Patriotism? Hanging Gardens. I think having the military bonus there could be helpful. Uh, so uh, a lot of this game, uh, it has a lot of the features that you would find in Civilization except for the map and the like building more cities. But um, mm, yeah, I, I should really like have a cue card where I try to explain all the good things um, and, and I'm also wanting to eat my dinner here uh, not the best recording this will be a test recording maybe something something I don't know I guess uh, this would be fine for a stream but I feel like I try to hold offline recordings to a higher standard um, so, the game, uh, the objective of the game is to have the highest culture score at the end of the game, but you also have to manage your science, your resource production, and your food, as well as happiness, um, and then also the fact that there are a bunch of events, um, and that you can attack or be attacked by your opponents, um, so it's it's all a fine balance. There's a lot of building up, a lot of interconnected parts. Um, it really is a good game. I'm just hoping that it's not too late in the day for me to convey to you what's going on here. Because I, I haven't explained anything yet. Um, currently, uh, we are second in the turn order. The turn order is fixed. Um, but currently we are Caesar and uh, our special ability, or Caesar, gets us one military strength and one military action, as well once during the uh, game while we have Caesar, we can play two uh, political actions in a turn. So right now, uh, at the start of a turn, we get to play a political action, which can be either we can spend one military uh, action, currently we have three, um, to uh, play an aggression where we attack someone, Although at the moment they would all be able to defend very easily, uh, or we can play an event uh, into the future events deck 
triggering a current event, which is currently unknown. It's one of these uh, ancient era events. And so I think we'll do that. Let's just drop this in there. When you play an event, you score culture equal to that event's level. And then so we played an event which was a territory, and so that'll come up sometime in the future. And then a random event from the present deck gets flipped up. And in this case, um, it's development of markets, which each player gets to choose whether they get two food uh, or two... Um, resources. And I... Did, did I not get to choose that? Um, end of my polit... Oh, okay. Skip politics. Um, because we had Caesar, we had the option of um, playing a second political action, so I needed to pass that over. And do I want to grab Columbus now? Uh, let's keep us on low food. We can grab irrigation early. No, I think we do need, uh, we can just sort of spin our wheels here. Um, but we do need, okay, fine. We'll increase population and That wasn't ideal. I think I would have preferred to uh, hold some of our... So, um, the because this came from a board game, um, this is a board. You're, it's our personal population bank, and each of these are beads that come off. Um, as you increase the population, you take um, these yellow circles or uh, little wooden chits off the board, uh, and then you place them on uh, onto, I guess, the, the active play area where those circles can either become uh, military units, farms, mines, uh, in this case, or, or other types of buildings, although uh, our building options will increase uh, once we develop more technologies. Um, anyways, uh, looking back at uh, this board, as we take more and more uh, yellow circles off by increasing our population, the amount uh, of food we need to pay to increase our population increases, as well as the amount of food that we consume per turn increases. Um, not only that, but as we advance to the ages... Uh, do I need to click on that? Is this a, a glitch? I actually haven't tested this out before. Mm, I hope it's not a glitch. Resume game, enter, spacebar, escape. Uh, okay, I think, um, anyways, uh, yes, my apologies. Um, so there are three ages to the game, um, not counting the initial startup age, which is the ancient era. There's uh, age one, age two, and age three. And at the end of each of those ages, um, two yellow tokens will be removed from everyone's population bank. So, um, your, the consumption of food of your population, as well as the amount needed to increase your population, will increase as the game goes on. Okay, so it's our politics phase again. Uh, we can play, if we're playing to be the strongest. We can play events that will favor uh, the strongest. So in this case, um, this punishes the weakest in terms of military strength. Right now, because we are Caesar, we have a bonus military strength, uh, and that gets us to a total of two. Um, here, the strongest civilization scores three or four culture, and the weakest loses four culture. I think. Let's go with the Crusades, and we'll just. Uh, it's generally a good idea to stay on top of the military. Um, and if we have Caesar, it'll be slightly easier to do that. Um, at the end of each age, a leader that is two ages behind, so uh, all leaders here are from the ancient era, so when we enter uh, the second uh, age, all leaders from the ancient era will uh, die or be retired. Um, so we won't have Caesar forever. 
let's go and grab iron. And we do have enough science, you stockpile science, and then um, to play technology cards. Uh, so technology cards are cards that have um, this number in the top left hand corner. Um, uh, depletes your accumulated science. Let's see. Um, so the yellow chits come out of a bank, and the blue chits also come out of the bank. Which I'll explain once it's not my turn. Um, so that used up all my actions, and we're not going corrupt. We're generating now five resources per turn, which is a good place to be in. Uh, we also have to discard a card, so I'm going to discard this tactics card, which I'll talk about later. But, um, so this bank is, is just like the uh, population yellow bank. Uh, it's the resource bank. Okay, uh, an event just came up that uh, lets us, um, when it's our turn, build um, a temple for free if we have a unique um, do. Um, if you're familiar with the board game, this is a slightly different implementation um, to speed things up for the online version. Um, in the board game, when an event comes up, everyone decides in order uh, what to do, and then the person whose turn it is, uh, their turn continues. But here, uh, all of those actions are left up um, or, or trigger once um, the actual uh, player's turn begins. Um, so these guys have proposed packs to each other, um, but uh, they turned it down. I should have read what pack that, that was a trade routes agreement. Um, the trade route agreement lets um, one of the parties use or substitute a food for a resource and the other party uh, the reverse. Um, so that can be nice, but I guess um, Generally, I like the, the side where you can use food for a resource uh, because uh, resources are much more flexible. Um, and so maybe the party that had the other side of using a resource as food uh, didn't want to give uh, the other side a perceived advantage. Um, so anyways, uh, the blue bank has a bunch of tokens, uh, blue tokens in it. And um, these blue tokens, when they're in the bank, uh, represent how much corruption you face. Um, the idea being that um, when you produce food and resources, they're taken out of the bank and put onto your uh, the farms or your mines generally. And so if you start stockpiling a lot, then you start encountering uh, corruption. So uh, that's something to keep in mind, and I generally try to avoid uh, corruption each turn, because the corruption is pretty heavy. Um, first it's minus two per turn, and then it's minus four per turn, and then minus six, uh, which is considerable given that right now we're only producing five resources per turn, which is um, pretty high for this stage of the game. Okay, so right now we're tied for first, and since it's our turn we win that tiebreaker, in which case um, we should play an event. Uh, the events generally favor the strongest civilization. Uh, and now we can bid, and I would like to bid uh, on this territory. Um, but this guy won the bid with two, and that is because he sent uh, he had a colonization bonus card. We didn't have any of those, so we couldn't bid uh, higher than one. We only had the one unit. Okay. Um, and now I have the option of playing another event if I wish, because I am Caesar. I think um, there are 20 cards left in this age, so I might save that for later when I could potentially play a double aggression on someone. But that does mean we have to... Um, get our uh, military strength up. So that's something to consider anyways. 
Uh, right now we have six resources stockpiled. That's not enough to complete a wonder in one go, which you generally don't need to do, but um, wonder progress is also marked with these blue tokens. So leaving a wonder uh, in progress uh, generally um, is a potential source of corruption. What we're going to do here is finish the wonder we already took, uh, which frees us to take another wonder, which I'm not going to do right now because I would use up all of my actions. Although that wouldn't be terrible. Um, I don't, it's only the ancient era events that could possibly let you do something with an uh, unused worker, so I should probably do something with, with this worker. However, I don't have any resources left for that. So I think maybe we will grab a wonder after all. Yeah. And that, uh, let's dot that tactic since we'll probably use it later and I don't need to draw more than two cards per turn. Uh, we will ditch uh, two weakest. Yeah, we're playing to be the strongest but I would rather keep the double aggression because that could be really powerful. So at the end of your turn, you draw cards equal to your unused military actions and your hand size is uh, limited to, is checked before you draw cards and it's equal to uh, your total uh, military actions prior to their, like your, um, not your unused, but rather like your, all of the military actions you have. Okay, so someone's offering me a deal here. Um, open borders, we both get an extra military action, but if we attack each other, uh, we get a bonus. So I can accept that. I would like some extra military actions. And if I decide to attack, um, fix it, Felix, I'll also get a bonus um, so for sort of like backstabbing your uh, another civilization um, with whom you have open borders. Uh, likewise, if he attacked me, he would get a two strength bonus um, but as of right now, he has no army, and that's because he sent an army to go and colonize um, this inhabited territory, which is worthwhile because it adds two yellow tokens to his yellow bank and increases uh, his population by one, which means it takes one yellow token out and in put into uh, his uh, unassigned worker pool. Um, if you played the original version of this game, Civilization... Um, through uh, uh, through the ages, a story of civilization, then this is something new. But apparently the new version of the game, which I haven't actually played in physical form, uh, has this a uh, change to the tactics uh, rules, which I'll get into later. But um, right now, I think I can count on getting a better colony. I'm not ready to attack anyone yet, I don't think, although He's got four cards. At, he, you can only play defensive cards equal to your military actions. So uh, there's a good chance that I can actually get off a successful um, aggression against Webb here. Let's see. Uh, show opponents. We could get three resources by destroying one of this guy's buildings if he can't defend, but he can. So he had a defensive card, uh, age one provides two defense, and then he also discarded um, just uh, any generic card. So, but that does mean he only has two cards left. So uh, this is where the uh, Caesar's ability comes in. Um, we can now go and plunder, we can play uh, and attack again. So normally you can't do this. This is Caesar's special. Oh, did did he have? Wow. So we had two defense cards and two more cards. Now he's out of cards, but we're also out of uh, aggressions. Um, okay. Well, that didn't cost us too much. Didn't cost him too much. But it'd been nice if we uh, could have gotten something out of that. Okay, so we have five resources. Um, we need nine to finish uh, this wonder. Um, 
the university. Let's um, think for now we might want to build up a warriors for six and then we can probably do another aggression on web next and while we're waiting um let's upgrade again so the downside uh the, the only thing that i'm putting us at risk at here is hmm, let's grab knights and then also Richland. Um, there is an H1 event called Rats, which um, removes all stored food. Right now we have five food stockpiled, um, so that is a risk. Uh, I don't want to lose that five food for a chance to increase my population. Um, but it's also a risk to play events when you're not um, ahead on military strength because there are a lot of events that will punish um, you for not having a lot of military strength uh, or reward the military strength leader. Well, let's go and look at that. Uh, so Webb uh, played a card. The yellow cards um, generally give you things. They don't require uh, technology points to spend. Um, he used the yellow card reserves one, the age one reserves to gain two, then increased his population twice and built a mine and built a warrior, bringing his strength to two. Um, and uh, he drew one card uh, because he only had one unused military action left. So we would definitely be able to successfully perform an aggression on Webb here. Webb also... Uh, has more culture than us. So I'm, and is producing a ridiculous amount of science per turn. So I, I feel good about attacking him. It's not like um, we definitely need to attack and to slow him down. Um, so the reason that he's uh, has more culture, I wasn't paying too much attention because I've, uh, I've just been like talking to myself incoherently, and, but hopefully, um, drawing you into this game. It's it's a very good game. Um, I think he started collecting culture sooner than us, and sooner than uh, Fix It Felix. Uh, and also, um, he's also joining more science because he has alchemy online. Um, anyways, it's our turn. We are going to do an aggression to get us up to uh, nine uh, resources so that we can finish the universities. Uh, let's take all resources. Let's build out the university. So now we're producing four um, science per turn and uh, two culture per turn, which is quite good. Uh, if we look at the stats table, that puts us ahead. Oh no. Hmm. Yeah, we still, we still have a ways to go. Web is doing quite well, uh, apart from on the, the military strength side of things. Um, we could build out knights, uh, or discover knights, but we don't have uh, the free population uh, or the resources to build that right now. Um, there's nothing on the card row that I can take with my current number of military actions, so let's um, quickly go and discover knights just to make use of that action, so we're gonna have to do that at some point in time, and then we'll pass the turn. and really hope that rats don't uh, come and get rid of uh, all of our food here. So um, that was the end of age one. So all of the leaders from the ancient era or antiquity uh, retire. I think there's a special word for that. Uh, they, oh, we just lose our leaders. There's probably a, a very thematic um, name for that whole process in the original rules. Maybe not. Anyways, uh, the event there uh, had each player lose a population. So when it's our turn, uh, we'll probably have to disband uh, one of our 
buildings because I don't we don't have a free population. Um, and we did not draw any new aggressions. So uh, we'll just have to play a normal event. I expect we'll still be number one on strength. Um, and we did uh, play Crusades. Um, let's go and look at that. Uh, and the Crusades was just triggered. Um, so we gained some uh, culture there, which is excellent. Um, we're now leading on culture. And tied on science production and resource production. So we are in a good position. We can... We should try to get our science production up, but to do that, um, we need uh, alchemy or the next generation uh, along the, the lab line would be uh, scientific method. Um, but we need that card off the card row. So a lot of the variation and replayability from this game comes off of uh, this card row. Um, so cards, uh, the two cards with the X's, they're automatically removed at the end of every turn. And then any cards that a player takes obviously are removed from the card row as well. And then everything slides down to the left. Uh, and then cards from the event deck or the... Uh, no, so this is the event deck uh, over here. These are the military cards. These are the civil cards. And this is the civil card row. Um, and so they uh, get taken out of uh, the civil card deck here. Anyways, um, obviously the cards are randomized, and so uh, the order they come in has a big effect on what strategies are efficient to pursue and the the like the flow of the game. Um, there are three regions on the card row. The leftmost um, costs one action to take from the middle, two uh, civil actions or white actions to take, and um, right at the beginning or uh, at the far end of the card row, it takes uh, costs three actions to take, um, and so um, if you really want to take something before someone else does, or uh, because it's important at that particular time, then it costs some more civil actions, uh, which is uh, less efficient. Okay, so right now, uh, Felix is ahead of us on strength, but I still feel comfortable playing this event. Um, because I knew it was likely to be this territory since I seeded it and there were only two cards left. Uh, and also, uh, how badly do I want this? Um, I do have extra cards. We may as well bid the three. And then we can play Columbus and then take Cook, uh, who gives us points for all the colonies we have. So we can go and colonize that. Now, what was our bid? Uh, we need a bit of three. Okay, so that gets us some science, um, gets us an extra um, blue chit in our bank, so we corrupt less easily and gets us an extra yellow inside our population bank, so um, it'll be cheaper for us to improve things for longer. And then we have to resolve that event, Pestilence, by um, unemploying or destroying something. So we'll go and destroy that. Um, but it does mean that at some point in time we'll need to improve our food production. Okay, um, let's go and grab Christopher Columbus. Increase our population, build a knight, and then if I wanted, oh, hmm, we should also build a warrior. Um, so if I wanted to increase my strength even more, I could replace uh, my current tactics card, which is a fighting band, which gets me an extra one strength um, if I have two warriors or two infantry uh, with this tactics card. But then I would have no military actions left, and then I wouldn't be able to draw any H2 cards. And what I would like to draw is a better territory. Like The wealthy territory is pretty good, um, but I want a better one because on my next turn, I'm probably going to use Columbus to um, settle a territory for free, which is his one 
uh, ability. Uh, so let's go and grab reserves here and end the turn. Uh, we can end the turn now and we will discard um, the infantry bonus. Okay, so we did not draw a better territory, but that's okay. Hmm. Do I want to spend... I could bid up to four, which... Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. Um, however, now that I have two colonies and uh, my opponents see that um, I also have Columbus, so they're expecting me to play a colony for free. They might take James Cook just to stop me, uh, because that would fit really well into my plan. Um, it's, it's quite a cost to take a leader that's not going to help you, though, because you can only take one leader per age. So if someone takes James Cook just to stop me from taking James Cook, um, then they also... Um, can't take any other age two leaders, which means they'll totally miss out on what could be even a better benefit. But for Fixit Felix, he already has a colony, so it's not like James Cook would be a total loss for him. So we'll see if he takes James Cook or not. So James Cook um, gets you uh, two culture for your first colony and then one culture for each additional colony per turn. Uh, so for us, uh, we are planning to have three colonies, yeah, that would be four culture per turn, which is considerable for this stage of the game. Uh, so I hope we get that. Anyways, right now, it looks like um, Felix just attacked Webb. Webb was unable to defend uh, and lost the population, and Felix generated some resources. Or it was a mix of food and resources, I believe. Yep, two food and two resources. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Right now, we... Um, okay, so uh, Felix... Uh, played Isaac Newton as his, his leader, so we are free to take uh, James Cook. Uh, we're going to go and discover this wealthy territory. Um, so the wealthy territory um, gets us six resources and then also puts three more tokens into our bank, so we're even less likely to corrupt, which is great. We now currently have 13 resources in our bank, which means we could build the Eiffel Tower. Uh, we have enough resources to do that, but we don't have enough actions to do that. Uh, I think I will go and definitely take James Cook. And I would like to be able to build the Eiffel Tower. Um, but that means I can't play James Cook this turn, which means I'm giving up on four culture per turn. And since Eiffel Tower is also just four culture per turn, I think I would rather it's better just to play James Cook right now. Um, so we're getting four culture from Cook, which is uh, and then plus one for the universities, one for the temple, six culture per turn, which is excellent. Um, and we only have two actions left. Each wonder you've built increases the cost of the next wonder, which is why taking the Eiffel Tower is going to cost us three, which we don't have enough for right now. Um, let's go and what we really need is a better way to make food. Um, so until that time, Reserves only gets us two food, which is not enough to increase our population. Um, hmm, this could be tricky. Uh, let's grab strategy. And then we'll pass the turn. Um, we are going to want to take um, the age two food tech, which is selective breeding pretty highly here. Uh, it's coming up right now. We also would like constitutional monarchy. So 
Uh, we'll see what makes it around. Hmm. Do we still have that open borders agreement? Ah, that's great. So we do have the extra military action from that. Felix has already um, upgraded his government to theocracy. So the government, uh, and then he just tried to attack Webb, but Webb successfully defended. That's good. I don't want um, Felix to get too much free stuff from Webb. Um, so your government is a quick way of modifying or increasing your number of civil actions and military actions. Right now we are on the default despotism, uh, which is just four civil actions and two military actions. Webb is on, wait, why does Webb have uh, the extra? Oh, so Webb has a, um, a blue technology code of laws that gets him an extra civil action. Whereas Felix has six um, civil actions uh, because he's at theocracy, which doesn't get any more civil actions than uh, despotism, but he also has the pyramids and code of laws. So that's why he has six. Anyways, we would like more actions. Uh, act more actions let us uh, more freely take things off the card row, uh, more expensive things, and then also uh, your civil actions is your hand size for um, civil cards. Anyways, uh, okay, so we aren't currently the weakest, but we're also not the strongest. We don't, I don't think we want to help Felix out too much here, so I might pass on the political phase until I'm stronger. So we definitely want selective breeding. We also definitely want constitutional monarchy. We have enough science to take uh, constitutional monarchy and discover it right away and then, so now we can use those extra actions and then we're going to take selective breeding discover that right away and then we're going to use rich land to upgrade our farm so now we're generating two food per turn which is good and then we might want this cannon or we might want the wave of nationalism we do have 17 resources stocked up so we probably don't need wave of nationalism which gets us a bonus for producing military units for every civilization that's stronger than us let's go and grab cannons then although uh, we're not going to have enough science to do anything with it right away. It's still good to have though, most of the tactics from age 2, if not all of them, require an artillery unit, so getting the cannons is going to be good. And Felix, we should probably cancel open borders with Felix, because if he attacks us, it's going to be really hard for us to defend against that. There'll be 14 because of the open borders, 14 strength versus 5. Um, then again, Felix uh, has 5 military cards, and um, they're not necessarily going to be aggressions. He is usually drawing two to three cards per turn, though. Um, you draw a maximum of three cards per turn. Um, and as you can see, or as I'll show you, uh, the military deck um, maybe only less a quarter of the cards are aggressions. So um, you can't automatically, even though you're stronger, uh, constantly be playing aggressions on the other players. Like it, uh, if you want to go that strategy, either the cards, you already need to have the cards or you need to be lucky enough to draw the correct cards.
Hmm. Would be nice. Okay, so I'm probably not going to play an event next turn either. Uh, although, what's in here? Yeah, but of the cards that I know, okay, good. Uh, I'm not being attacked, despite the fact that because of open borders, um, if Felix were to attack me, um, I would have the same strength as strength differential as Web. The thing is that it's not just Felix favoring me for unknown reasons, but I can play up to five cards for defense, and I also have seven cards in my hand. So I'm much more likely to be able to defend uh, against Felix's attack compared to Webb. And that's a lot of that has to do with my large stockpile of military actions. Um, so this turn, I could, I think, we could declare a war on Webb. and then build out um, this tactic. So that would be plus two, plus three. Mm, how easy would Webb be able to counter build? Um, he does also have a stockpile of resources. Let's just use this turn to cancel our open borders agreement. Um, and so that deprives Felix of a military action. It also deprives us of a, of a military action. That's, uh, I'm willing to do that. We can also take Ocean Liner Service and maybe build that out. That could be a good option. Um, but I do want to um, get my military strength up, so we're going to use that reserves to make food, increase our population, uh, build a warrior, which is not the most exciting thing. So now we're at seven, and then we'll play um, the phalanx. So we're up to nine, uh, which is a little better, but not amazing. Uh, let's grab ocean liner service and we can start building it perhaps. Uh, we're still corrupting. Is there something else that I can do with that to stop us from corrupting? No, there isn't. Um, well, it just can't be helped in this situation. Uh, so we'll just pass the turn there. And we do need to discard some of these things. I guess... We could, uh, so we'll go reserves, uh, we'll cancel this pact, go reserves to gain food, increase population, uh, build all knights, disband this warrior. Uh, to free up the population, reassign him as a knight, and then play heavy cavalry, tying for first place. Um, we're still corrupt. Take ocean liner service, build the first stage, and now we're not corrupting. Yeah, I like that better. We're not going to be drawing any new cards, but that that's fine. Uh, we have to discard three. Let's discard one of the wars and ravages of international agreement. Yeah. Okay, so next turn we'll be able to finish our line of service, which lets us increase our population for free each turn. And we can also probably declare war on web next turn. A war over territory gets us more yellow tokens for our yellow bank. Web has been playing his... Oh, did Web quit? Oh, is that... Well, that's why he's been playing so quickly. He's just... 
disconnected or something. Uh, I think that gear might explain why he's been playing so quickly. But the AI for this game is decent. I mean, it's not as good uh, or as fun as playing against a person. Um, but maybe that explains why Webb is sort of stagnated. No, I mean, he has a decent looking civilization. Um, he is producing as much culture per turn as us, more science per turn than us. Yeah, he's he'll be okay. Uh, I think he did disconnect that, which does explain why his turns are going so fast. Meanwhile, we need to keep an eye on Felix. He's producing a lot per turn. Uh, he built the Transcontinental Railway, which gives him four strength, uh, and his best mine produces two. So he has one coal mine, which is producing six resources uh, for a total of nine resources per turn, uh, in addition to his three iron or uh, bronze mines. That's nine resources to our six resources per turn. Um, so we, we are ahead on culture. So if we just sort of like maintain here, don't let Felix um, get ahead of us on military, which he could do if he, uh, because he's able to build stuff more quickly, although he isn't making more food per turn. So even if he has a lot of resources, if he doesn't have population, he won't be able to uh, turn those, uh, he won't have any unemployed workers to employ his soldiers. Um, he could also get ahead of us on military by generating more science, which will let him uh, generate or take more technologies, which will let him upgrade his units. Um, so he just played an aggression successfully on web, stole five science from web, which is letting him do some things. Let's see. Uh, he developed cannons, which um, should let him eventually field a much stronger army. Yeah, so this this right here is a medieval army, so if he has the medieval army tactics card, um, I think the medieval army gets plus seven or plus eight military strength, which could be quite a lot. Uh, let's go and declare... Uh, well, first let's see how easily Webb could um, build up a defense in one turn, which it does not look like he could easily do that. He could disassemble a whole bunch of stuff uh, and then has the resources to build up an army, but I, there's no good reason for him to do that. So I think we're safe in declaring this war over territory. And then I would... Okay, let's... Do we have... All right, let's finish Ocean Liner Service, and then let's get the free worker from Ocean Liner Service. We could also increase the population again. Do we want a cannon, or are we happy? Okay, let's discover strategy, which gets us more strength and more military actions. Um, let's also make one more knight in case um, well the greater differential will get us more spoils from the war but in case we want to colonize another colony that comes up if there's another colony in this event deck and then we should probably grab riflemen and maybe architecture uh, or we could increase our population again. Let's just grab architecture. Okay, that seems good. Okay, so we drew another aggression, so we can continue the aggressions here. Web loses Leonardo da Vinci since we've entered H3. Um, the first leaders to come down on the card row are Charlie Chaplin, who allows our best theater. Currently we have no theaters to produce twice as much culture. He also gives two happiness and then Bill Gates who uh, lets our labs produce resources equal to the level uh, and then at the end of the game they score culture equal to that production. 
Um, so currently we only have the very basic philosophy labs. They would not generate any resources, but we would like to get computers at some point. So hopefully that'll come down the time. Go look at what we've got here. Um, we could plunder web. Uh, we should also look into taking down Felix. Um, but he, he has three age two military cards. Um, some of those are probably defense cards. At least one of them is probably a defense card. Uh, the H2 defense card provides plus 4 defense, which would put him at 16, and then he can discard any random uh, military card. He can discard up to, uh, let's see, 3 cards. So we probably would not be successful uh, with an aggression against Felix, but we would be successful with an aggression against Webb. So if we need resources, we should play that aggression. Uh, otherwise, we'll probably just play an event um, and then start seeing what comes up in the event deck. Um, if I do want to attack Felix directly, though, I should keep on building up that military strength. We'll see what opportunities the card row presents. And my dinner has totally gotten cold. But this is way more fun. Um, yeah. I haven't played this game enough to like give uh, the most coherent uh, introduction or um, best laid plans or strategies. But I definitely have played enough to be excited about all of these things, even if, you know, it's not graphically the most intense. Um, so let's, let's go back and look at this. So we have a huge reservoir of culture and we're making more culture per turn and we're not feeling threatened by Felix right now. Um, Felix, he's getting in a lot of aggressions against Web. This, this isn't like the most representative of games in the board game uh, and also online, but I don't think the computer does. Um, you're allowed to concede, in which case your civilization disappears from the game, and that stops people from like repeatedly pummeling like a, a crippled civilization, um, which is apparently what's happening here. Despite the fact that like Webb is in second place in terms of culture, he's producing more culture per turn, has a huge uh, stockpile of science. If he could turn things around. Uh, if he could only free up some people, um, he would. He could definitely turn things around. Um, but because of that war over territory, I've cleaned out three tokens from Webb's yellow bank, which makes it much harder for him to increase his population. Uh, here, let's see what we want to do. Uh, we could play an aggression if we needed more resources or something. There, uh, computers is coming down the card row, um, but I don't think I need those resources just now. Would I rather, I think I would rather play age three events. So let's see, Webb does have a bunch of resources. Let's go and attack Webb, although I feel bad since he, it feels kind of weird that um, he disconnected like that, but uh, I don't really know how, like what, how active the people on uh, this system are. Okay. Um, I think computers is the big priority here. Let's grab computers. I'll discover. Oh, we don't even have enough science for that. Um, hmm. Okay. I think we can risk. Well, first of all, let's get our free. Uh, population from o Ocean Liner Service, and then we should probably increase our population there too, um, if only to use up some of or help avoid corruption. 
we should get ahead on military strength here but i think i definitely need computers um, if only because if felix takes it then uh that'll definitely hurt us so let's take computers um although we don't have enough sites to discover it just now and let's build up some more military um, I would like it if I could build some of these more advanced units, but I don't have the science to play that card right now, so we're stuck with just training more knights. We do have two heavy cavalry units, so that's uh, uh, four and four. Bonus strength, that brings us up to 25, which is none too shabby. And let's grab an efficient upgrade, which we can use to uh, upgrade our philosophy to computers as one does and maybe grab the justice system as well okay that seems good all right so now we have some age three events uh that uh, local event just resolved resources from that and um, Felix's modern army just went into the common tactics pool so we can pay two military actions to take that if we wanted the uh, Napole Napoleonic army rather choosing loot from war over technology So yeah, as long as we can keep Felix from getting on top of us militarily, because we have the culture lead, um, we are going to be in good shape. There will also be end game scoring events, which are things like impact of industry, which I don't want to play because it would give more culture to Felix than to I. Um, so what Felix did here is took uh, for science what and maybe this other technology uh, which I think was um, satellites or something uh, not satellites it was radio satellites it was satellites huh all right so we're still on top Military-wise, satellites um, gives a colonization bonus as well as a strength bonus. Um, so four points for colonization and three points for strength. At present, hmm. Felix's culture return is catching up to us. Webb's culture return is actually uh, twice ours and um, he'll soon surpass us in terms of raw culture so we definitely can't count him out even though he seems to have given up on the military game um we will probably want to do a armed intervention against web rather than impact of industry because that that is a big scoring event that doesn't really help us so yeah that'll be our political event and then we want to discover computers. Um, so there, there's a second computer coming down the card row. So we didn't necessarily need to spend three civil actions to take that. Uh, but it's possible that the, I think there should be three computers. Uh, there's only two computers. And it's possible that the other computers could have been like way deep in this event deck. So um, getting computers was really important for us at this stage because we are generating a very, very small amount of science return and um, falling behind on that and being unable to develop a lot of these cards that are coming down, which are quite powerful, would be quite crippling. So let's go and play an armed intervention against Web, which gets a seven on uh, the foray. We 
Hmm. Do we want... Uh, let's get enough food so that we can both ocean liner service and normal increase our population. Then we can grab movies. Oh, okay. Uh, right. We need computers first. Computers. Efficient upgrade. That looks like it would be the turn. Um, so now we're making 12 science per turn. We'll discover movies next turn. Employ the unhappy uh, person or employ one of our people, which will cover happiness issues and we'll be set. So yeah, I think that seems fine. We're still number one on strength. Uh, we can ditch some of this stuff. New deposits. Oh man, Felix is so much in terms of resources. We do have a lot of decent stuff done as well. Um, now that we're generating a lot of science per turn, we'll be able to grab whatever we need and develop it off the card room right away. Um, what's going to give us a lot of culture is getting a whole bunch of movie theaters online. Hmm. Yeah. That should be good. We'll be able to build two movie theaters next turn, which will more than double our culture output. And then I'm right now Cook is getting us for culture per turn, so we'll probably want to keep him around for a while. Um, Churchill gets us three culture per turn, uh, and Gandhi two culture per turn, so I'm definitely happy to hang on to Cook for a while longer. So Felix's problem is that he isn't generating very much food. So he has four people employed in agriculture, but because this is the base technology, each agricultural worker only generates one food. And he's dug really deeply into this population bank to the point where increasing his population costs five food. Uh, and they're consuming three food per turn. So he's only collecting one food per turn, which is going to take him a while to get up to five. So even though he has all these resources, um, there's not a whole lot he can do with that. The resources, uh, if you're limited on population. Uh, he just played an armed intervention against Webb. Um, there's a lot of science if you got the crew version. Swordsmen or knights, say tanks or um, modern infantry or something like that, then he could, without having more population, pay to uh, upgrade his units or say, as I did there, upgrade my philosophy labs to computer labs. Um, but each of those legs requires all of the other buckets. Like all of these like resource buckets are important to everything else. It's, it's just such a good game. Uh, I have so much respect for this game designer. Uh, and like he, um, the other game that's sort of tied for my favorite game, uh, board game, would be uh, Agricola, um, which is also an excellent game, but uh, oh, hmm, if I want more food, I can uh, do an aggression there. We'll play Impact of Colonies because that's definitely favorable for me. Um, but all of uh, Yui Rosenberg's games are so similar to each other. Well, not all of them, but um, somewhat similar. Whereas um, uh, I, I, I can't say any of their names properly. Um, the designer of this game, Vlada Chavatil, uh, all of his games are also excellent, but they're like so 
different from each other. Anyways, Through the Ages is a gem. Uh, many of his other games are also very good. Uh, movies. So, let's discover that. Build out. Increase population for free with ocean liner service. And the most efficient way to boost our strength if Felix starts to race us is with tanks. So let's quickly grab that. And Einstein would be good. Churchill, if we take Churchill, um, that'll be our age three leader and we won't be able to take Einstein later. Um, I don't think we're gonna be able to develop more than one, an average of one tech per turn. Although with Einstein, uh, our best lab will be doubled in terms of science output. Uh, I'm fine with taking Churchill. I'm also fine with taking military buildup or even um, Okay, let's grab military buildup in case we need it. Uh, our huge stockpile of resources was chewed up in building those two movie theaters. And let's maybe efficient upgrade. At, so if in a pinch I could build a lab and then efficiently upgrade it. Um, I think we should take Churchill just in case. That'll that'll be good. Oh, we're at we're at a hand size limit. Uh, in that case, let's be happy with what we have, or perhaps build another knight. Uh, we're out of resources. Okay, um, so we can just pass the turn here. Would I rather than military build up? Would I rather have reserves? Uh, yes, more flexible, and I don't think I'm that desperate for military strength, especially since uh, it would only be a plus five, since uh, we're never going to be weaker than web. So let's ditch. These two territories, um, just because we're not planning to play them or win them, I don't think. Okay, so we got another war. The war over culture will be really good. We'll be able to grab a whole bunch of culture from Web, because I think right now Web should have quite the stockpile of culture. Uh, yeah, he's got 61 culture, which is definitely more than Felix. So we'll go and declare. A war on culture on web, and then take it from there. We are generating the most culture per turn. We have the strongest military, um, neck and neck in terms of science production with Felix. Uh, we're lagging in terms of resource production, um, but six per turn is still very workable. Um, and we're not really that high on food production. In fact, uh, we only have one worker employed in uh, a farm, uh, but it is selective breeding, so that one farm is generating three food per turn. The thing is that we have a wonder, ocean liner service, which lets us increase our population for free uh, without paying any food. So we're set as far as that goes. Um, we do have seven resources right now. Movie theaters cost 11. Uh, if we discover engineering, that'll bring the cost down to eight, which is still um, not enough. But if we played reserves or if we played this aggression, um, we would have the resources we need to build another theater. I think we definitely want to declare the war on culture um, before uh, the game ends. There's only 11 age three cards left. So we'll declare the war of our culture. On the last turn, we might do, depending on what we think will get us more culture points, either an aggression um, to get a bunch of resources to build more theaters, or directly grab seven culture, um, likely from one. Well.
Okay, so declare war over culture against web. And then if we want to really up our strength, we could discover tanks and then upgrade some of these guys to tanks. The thing is, um, we don't have enough science to do it all at once. Do I want to grab engineering? Engineering plus reserves and okay, first of all, before we get, let's make uh, make use of ocean liner service and then let's gain resources. Take engineering, although this might not be necessary. Discover engineering, build movies for heat. And then we can also just build up another night. And then we have two actions left. Um, so our urban building limit is three, which means that we've already built the maximum number of movie theaters with that last theater. So if we take multimedia, that'll give us more options for building more things, um, which using uh, plunder, we would have enough resources for. So let's grab multimedia and then pass the turn. And we can ditch these events. Active web resigned. Okay, so web resigned, which means that our war doesn't do anything. Um, so that's good. So the computer is actually really smart. Um, when it doesn't think it can win, uh, it'll just quit. Uh, which is, I mean, we were about to gain uh, over 20, potentially gaining 23 culture. Uh, we still have enough culture to beat Felix unless something really shocking happens. Um, so I'm not too disappointed about that. I'm actually kind of glad that um, that mechanic was used. Although it does mean that, you know, our last political action was essentially wasted. Okay, so science production, uh, that would give Felix 10 points. Uh, impact of competition, the differential. So we get three points for playing the event, and then we would get, uh, we have three more um, strength from competition over Felix. So that's a plus six. If we could win this aggression, that would be a plus 14, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Impact of government. Um, Felix gets more on impact of strength. We get more so long as we stay on top strength wise, but since we go last, um, if we are still on top, then yeah, we'll definitely play impact of strength. It seems unlikely that um, we'll be able to win an aggression against Felix uh, since he does have five military cards and can play three of them and we're only up by six strength yeah so our best bet is to play impact of strength which we get three points for playing the card and 10 if we are the strongest so that's plus 13 which is quite good and so unless felix can quickly up his military strength which is quite difficult because he doesn't have free workers to do so uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely set as far as that goes. This game uh, is should very comfortably be ours. Oh, and there's Sid Meier. We can also elect a leader for ourselves. Uh, entertainingly, um, our labs produce culture equal to the level, so our two computer labs would uh, produce a total of six culture or three culture each but they each produce one less science so um i guess i mean obviously everyone in the labs are uh playing civilization instead of doing research i make no confessions about my own phd
but Felix is thinking quite hard about his turn. So there are these mega uh, wonders at the end of the game, which can score a lot of cultures. So as soon as you finish building it, um, it gets you culture um, equal to whatever criteria it says, in this case, um, culture for all of your workers. Um, so if Felix built this, he would score 23 culture, which is quite significant. Um, it would go a long way to catching him up to us. Um, all of these endgame wonders cost quite a lot in terms of resources. So for example, uh, fast food chains costs uh, 16 resources and we're only generating 6 per turn. Felix, with his 12 per turn, um, really wants to build a lot of wonders. Um, the problem is well, there isn't really a problem. I mean, so right now he's got Hollywood. Um, he could finish building that right now. Uh, he would score um, culture equal to twice the number of his theaters and libraries. And right now he's getting nine from theaters. So he would score 18 culture, which is quite good. Uh, he also has a lot of actions. Oh, maybe this isn't as... Um, a much of a lock as I was thinking. Um, so he, so uh, let's see. So the blue technology engineering lets you build, uh, lets me build four stage up to four stages of a wonder for one civil action. Whereas Felix doesn't have anything in the engineering line. So each step of the wonder he needs to spend a civil action on. So finishing Hollywood will take him three actions, taking fast food chains. Uh, will cost him four actions, and then building fast food chains will cost him four actions. So he doesn't have enough to build both. So we're safe there. If he had engineering, we could be in trouble because he's got, well, he doesn't have enough resources to build both anyways. So we're safe there. But um, that is, if you have a lot of resource reduction and a huge stockpile of resources, then that these end game wonders, um, as you can see, score a lot of culture and are a very powerful way of converting your resources into culture, which is what wins you the game. But again, uh, you, you can't ignore the other categories um, because in, in this situation, you need either civil actions or technologies uh, or a mix of both in order to pull all of that off. Um, in our next game, where I'll have eaten beforehand and tested out all of these things beforehand, maybe I'll give a better explanation as to what's happening in the game, but I hope this is giving you a good taste of what Through the Ages is all about. Um, so yeah. Let's let's just pause the game here while Felix figures out what he's going to do, and I'll, I'll probably eat something. Uh, Alright, so Felix needs to finish turn now. He built Hollywood for plus 24 culture, um, which brings his total quite close to ours. Um, so it actually is going to be a closer game. We are ahead on strength, so we're going to play the impact of strength as planned. And then we also trigger authorization of science, um, which Felix comes out ahead on by one culture point, but that's fine. So as of right now, Felix is ahead by 11 points. Let's see what we can do to up that even more for us. Uh, we'll want to take Sid Meier and Again. So that gets us up to 20 culture per turn. Um, we, if we built another computer lab, that would be another three culture. If we built multimedia, that's also three culture. In either case, um, we don't have enough resources. So multimedia uh, costs eight, and that's already modified by engineering. Uh, which is the same price as building up a computer lab, so we do not have enough resources for that. Um, so all things being equal, let's develop tanks, and 
in terms of we've got impact of colonies, impact of strength. Um, hmm. Don't think it makes a difference. Um, well, let's increase with ocean liner service. We have six resources. Um, let's see, Felix. There might be so of the possible cards that are here. Uh, it could be impact of agriculture, which I doubt. Uh, Felix right now is not making very much food, so we're winning on that. Um, impact of progress for blue technologies, we can't do anything about. Impact of wonders, we can't do anything about. Impact of population, these favor us. Uh, impact of happiness, we can improve. Impact of balance, variety. Um, okay. So, we, let's, for impact of balance, that would be building a new farm. Impact of happiness would be to build a new temple. Let's build a new farm, which would cost us six. Yeah, we'll just call it there. Grab some random cards off the card row and see who wins. So all of the age three events will be scored. So first, impact of happiness. Uh, we tied on that. We could have built another temple and that would have gotten us another two points. Impact of technology. We also tied on that. So that's four culture for every level or age three technology we've discovered. Impact of colonies, which I have three colonies versus uh, Felix's one colony. And then impact of agriculture, uh, which we scored a whole bunch more on that because I built that extra selective breeding. Uh, and then impact of strength, which I played so I knew it was in there. All right, so we won, awesome. And uh, we've unlocked some achievements, uh, and um, Webb, apparently, uh, he was a level 8, uh, there's some sort of internal scoring system, but I guess he had to leave for whatever reason, so we got a bunch of points there. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this online thing, but uh, it's pretty fun. Um, so yeah, uh, this I really enjoyed that game, uh, sorry if it wasn't the most coherent, um, but uh, I'll probably make some more of these. Uh, let me know what you thought about it and what sorts of things I should explain next time. But uh, yeah, um, that's Through the Ages. Um, it used to be that you could play this game for free with a, uh, a very elegant web interface. It didn't have the nice art or anything like that. I don't know if that's still running now that there's an official implementation of this. But um, yeah, alright. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed that.